The first reason you should consider upgrading from an older Mac to a newer one is performance improvement. If you're finding it challenging to do things like be able to work on a spreadsheet, a, a Word doc, being able to listen to music, or just being able to like watch one of your favorite shows, and you're noticing that the computer is slower to do so, then that might be an indicator that it's time for an upgrade. I know in my case, I was experiencing all of that, and then on top of that, I edit videos. And so, as I would just put in just 1080p footage, and to be able to try to like play it back, I was noticing some stuttering here and there, don't get me started on 4K. Even if you're in a situation where you just have like general usage, if you start experiencing those things, that's probably an indicator that it might be time to move on. So if you wanna hear more tips like this, stick with me, and I'll tell you some more reasons why you should consider going from an older Mac to a newer one. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas here, helping you simplify tech in order to improve your life. I recently made the transition from a 2015 MacBook Pro to a 2020 Mac Air with the new M1 chip, and I recognize dropping a G or more on a laptop is a big decision. Well, hopefully at the end of this video, it becomes abundantly clear that it actually may be more cost effective to move from an older Mac to a newer one. So if you're excited to hear more about this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and let's keep moving. Number two, you need to increase your onboard storage. When I purchased this 2015 Mac, it was with 128 gigs of overall memory. Now I thought at the time that that was plenty, but what I didn't realize was that the OS was gonna take up about 50 gigs of that. What I didn't realize at the time was that the number of applications I would build up over a time would take up another 20 gigs. And then when you start layering in, just having documents, having just a little bit of music on my overall Mac, at this point right now as I'm recording this video, I've got 12 gigs of available storage. That is a no-no in terms of just being able to have the operating system be able to move at its most efficient level. And so what ends up happening is that those problems that I mentioned earlier before, because of the performance, they're stemming more than likely from that. Being able to have just good, a good amount of onboard storage was important to me. And so when I switched over to the new one, I made sure to get me a terabyte, which would now allow me to have a lot of range in terms of being able to store things and be able to have the operating system move a little bit better. And when you look at the overall cost of being able to switch out versus keeping um, what it is that I have, well, $200 to $550, depending on the amount of memory that you have. Now, for a terabyte onboard storage, that for me was worth the potential of getting a new machine. Now, I think, and now I know some of you may be thinking, like, oh, why do you just get an external SSD? Well, the problem is, is that if 50% of my available storage is dedicated to the operating system, that leaves me very little headroom to keep exports on my machine. I'll be able just to be able to play Netflix without any type of issue. You feel me? Now, Number three, battery performance. At the end of the day, you need your machine to work and you want it to be able to work for an extended amount of time without having to plug in. What I've started noticing, particularly over the last few months before I made the switch, was that it would take me only about two hours or so to drain the battery down from 100% down to about 30% before I would need to plug in. This would happen a little bit slower if I was only using like one application at a time, like if I was just streaming a movie or if I was just doing something in a Google Doc. But the moment I started like video editing or something like that, it would go down definitely in about an hour. And that for me started to give me just a little bit of angst and a little bit of concern, particularly because I've now started getting into doing some commercial work for clients and I don't wanna be in a situation where I'm gonna be concerned about my computer dying and I've got a deadline that I've gotta hit. So if you're thinking about you know, whether or not you should replace just because of a battery, well, consider this, a, a replacement battery, probably about 200 bucks. But again, I told you I got the SSD issue, so 500 potentially plus 200, that's $700. That's now, we had a three quarter mark in terms of just getting a new machine. Number four, my 2015 is low key about to be obsolete. And by obsolete, I mean that it's getting to a point where being able to upgrade to the latest Mac OS is gonna be challenging, which means that being able to be in a position to get updates, security updates, maintenance fixes is gonna be more challenging. I'm in that six year window, but at seven years, that's generally when Mac starts to be less supportive in terms of operating systems. Now these machines are not built to last forever, and so I purchased this uh, 2015 already used, and so I didn't realize it was even a 2015 until recently, just before I upgraded, thought about 
as I mentioned, being able to you know, do those couple of upgrades and just keep it moving. But end of the day, being able to be in the position where I could just get continued maintenance. And I wanted to take full advantage of using the things that come with Big Sur. The last reason, peace of mind. The fact that I would be able to just get a whole new machine, start totally from scratch, made it 100% worth it to me. What I wanted to look at was also just like performance to value. The fact that I could just spend a little bit over $1,000 and get all of my needs resolved and be able to have some things going into the future made this a no brainer. And so for you, that might be a similar situation. I know some of you may be thinking like, all right, should I go from a pro to a pro or a pro to an air? Well, for me, there's a lot of really great videos out there in terms of just like benchmark performances and things like that. But for me, it was actually a lot simpler. For me, for a Mac Air, I wanted something that was lightweight. I wanted to be able to do most of my daily tasks. Video editing aside, I can do everything else on here very easily, very seamlessly. When it came to thinking about like, all right, what I use as my primary video editing machine, for right now, because I'm only doing maybe something like six to eight videos a month, including like client work, that for me works. Now, if I need to start doing like more videos than that, then that's when I start visiting the conversation about having a workstation. But I didn't need this to be my end all be all. And the other thing I would uh, say considering in that is that I didn't wanna make my life totally dependent on something that's totally new. So I'm not getting rid of this quite yet. We'll see what type of announcements are coming here in the future. So let me know in the comments, like what are the reasons that you're thinking about in terms of upgrades? And I'll do my best to answer uh, questions for you. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.